Good morning kids and welcome to another Sunday school lesson. This is our 10th lesson and hope you have enjoyed everything so far. So how was your week? Yeah, hope it was good and hope you all were thankful for all the things that you received this week. Okay, so shall we start today's lesson with a time of praise and worship? Today I'm not going to tell you a story, okay? But we're going to look into something that is as important as learning about the Bible. It's about worship and about the Sunday service, okay? So, what do you think uh, the, the meaning of worship is? Yeah, worship means a feeling or expression of reverence towards a God. Or if you want a simpler version, it means showing lots of love and adoration to something or someone. Okay, so when you go to church and when you say I'm going to worship, it means taking part in the service. Have you noticed a, a particular order during the service? Yeah, Are there are particular moments when um, a certain things or a certain prayer is told yeah well this order of service is given in a book called the liturgy book okay and this is what the book looks like yeah. the book is given from the church of Ceylon okay and we are going to look at what this book says okay so the order of service starts with the gathering this is where the people come into church and they take a seat and the service is started with a hymn. Number two is the prayer of preparation. This kids sometimes are said by a priest or by a, a, a person from the congregation who is there to lead the service. Now in Auntie's church, um, the four Sundays or four or five Sundays are divided to each organization so like the first sunday is the sunday school the second sunday is the yf the youth fellowship then it's the mother's union yeah and then the fourth sunday is the uh the parochial church council which is everyone okay so the prayer of preparation can be said by anyone then number three is the confession uh, this again is is uh, told by someone okay and the congregation will say it along with the person who is saying it number four is absolution now this prayer it's a prayer now this it kids is a prayer and it's said only by the priest okay number five is the gloria this too is a prayer and it can be said or it can be sung, okay? 
it's not on special Sundays, say like Christmas or Easter or any special Sunday in your church, usually this the Gloria is sung. Number six is the collect. Uh, this is a prayer that is said before all the Bible readings. Okay. And number seven, well, this is a um, uh, um, couple of things that are added together. And it, it's, it's referred to as the ministry of the word. Okay, kids, uh, the couple of things that are added are the three Bible readings and the psalm. Some churches say, um, say a psalm, have the psalm reading, but some churches don't. Okay, and the order of it is as this. Okay, so first is the Old Testament reading, and then the psalm. Then comes the New Testament reading, which after this is the, is, is a hymn, okay? And after the hymn comes the gospel. Yes, now once the gospel is read and finished, um, everyone will end up be seated and the priest or a lay person will come and give the sermon. Now the sermon is usually uh, a teaching a story of the Bible and uh, which is well, it depends on church to church. So sometimes it's only the story and or like what happened in the Bible, like according to that story. And then the priest will also say what we can learn of that story and what we should do um, according to that story. Okay. So once the sermon is finished, comes the affirmation of faith. Now, the affirmation of faith, again, is a long prayer. Um, I'm sure you would have, it's where we affirm our faith in, 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 in God, and then we affirm our faith into, we affirm our faith to our church. Okay, so I'm sure you would have heard this. It starts with, we believe in one God, the Father, the Son. Yeah, so that's the affirmation of faith. After that, is number 10 which is the prayer of the people and the prayer of the people are the is sorry is the intercessions this most of the time is done by again a person from whichever organization or uh, depending on the church again by just a person from the congregation Number 11 is the greeting of peace. Okay, now uh, in the church that I goes to, the priest um, walks up to front, to the middle, like to the middle, near the pulpit is, and he calls everyone else who has taken part in the service. So that means all the people who did the readings, yeah, and all the people who did certain prayers, right? Uh, the, the all the servants, then the assistant priests, yeah. So he calls everyone up to the front and they stand, say so they stand in a row, and they put their hands together and they bow down to all four sides and they say, peace be with you, okay? So now this is an artist church but some churches are different some in some countries or even in some churches in Sri Lanka. People would shake hands or they would even hug each other, right? So after this is the ministry of sacrament. Um, this kids is usually is said by the priest. So the priest leads it and the congregation responds, okay? So now the ministry of sacrament is actually a prayer said by the people, which is then followed by a hymn. Now during this hymn, um, collection is taken and the bread and wine is taken up to the altar by two people. Okay, once everything is given to the altar, the priest blesses the people and a prayer is said by all the people who are present in church and by the priest. 
that prayer is known as the offertory prayer. Next comes the Eucharistic prayer. This again is said only by the priest. Okay. Um, when the priest says this prayer, uh, the congregation uh, will have a response like of one or two sentences. Okay, now um, this is quite a long part. This is this part of the service is quite long because it includes um, a lot of different prayers. Okay, kids, uh, the Lord's prayer is also said in between these prayers, and towards the end of this part, uh, the invitation is given by the priest for the congregation to come up for communion, and then comes the communion, which everyone. Mm, who is confirmed or even if you're not confirmed like kids can go up to the altar and father would give you uh, if you're confirmed father would give you a piece of bread which is known as the host and some wine and if you're not confirmed for kids usually the priest would bless the kid okay so um, after this uh, there is also a, a prayer, a thanksgiving prayer, which is said by the priest. And then number 14 are the notices. The notices are usually what um, has been lined up or what would take, take place during church, um, at, at church during the whole week. Okay, number 15, the last part is the dismissal. This kids is done by the priest and it's usually, uh, it's a sentence called, um, no, the priest would say, uh, I'm sure you would have heard it. And the priest would say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Okay, now this part is very important because, uh, well, it tells you how to behave, how to act during the whole week. So that means to love, okay, to love one another and to love the Lord and to serve the Lord. Um, so that kids is the order of the service. But if you all go for service regularly, okay, you will uh, hear these prayers and then uh, by hearing itself, you would know, you will, uh, you will uh, tend to, you know, it sort of gets memorized. Um, you'll end up memorizing it, even not knowing that you memorized it, yeah, because you hear it every Sunday. Uh, and uh, it wouldn't be as you know, confusing as it sound, sounds like what Andy just said, okay. So going for services, kids, is very important. Yeah, because one is then we will get to meet our fellow uh, Christian brothers and sisters, our friends, okay, and that alone is a fellowship, okay, and then uh, we will hear uh, the word of God, which is the sermon, yeah, that's from the priest itself, it's quite different to what you will learn, I mean, in, it's more in depth of what you learn from Sunday school, yeah and it also helps you to build a good relationship with god because you go to church every day you then end up listening to his word okay and you'll uh, be there'll be more fellowship and more uh, praise and worship okay so that's one of the important things kids are going to church i know sometimes it might be boring yeah, but try and go every Sunday with your parents or grandparents or even with an aunt or uncle, yeah, because uh, by going to church is only uh, how we will build our relationship with God. Okay, kids, so shall we end today with a word of prayer? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful day. Thank you for being with me the all of last week thank you for keeping me safe for guiding me for helping me to make the correct decisions please dear lord i pray that you will be with me also during this coming week that you'll be with my parents my siblings my friends my teachers um, i pray that you'll also uh, be with me during every single moment that you'll help me and that you will guide me 
uh, and that you will show me the correct path that I need to take. Um, please forgive me for any wrong that I may have done willingly or unwillingly. Um, help me Lord to, to follow your footsteps and be a good person. I ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Okay kids, um, hope you have a good week ahead. Okay, stay safe. God bless and take care.